Hi Bold Bakers, we've been really busy here at Bigger Bolder Baking. Since November, we launched the Bold Baking Academy, which I am so proud of and a lot of you are members of. For those of you who are not, I wanted to give you an exclusive look into one of the classes. I'm gonna share with you a video for Car Cake Cheesecake Roll, which is from the Mastering Cheesecakes course. Our Academy videos are different to what we do on YouTube. They are more detailed, more focused, and you learn new skills and techniques every single week. Until now, this video was exclusive for the members of the Bowl Baking Academy, but today you get to see it. And I'm also going to give you a limited time, 10 day free trial to the Bold Baking Academy and all that information can be found below. Enjoy the class. Welcome to the Bold Baking Academy. This is where you'll learn how to bake with confidence and have fun doing it. This month's course is all about cheesecake. Last week, we made an incredible baked chocolate and hazelnut cheesecake. It was really rich. It's definitely for the chocolate lover in your life. I showed you how you can bake a traditional cheesecake in a water bath. This week for our Step It Up recipe, we're gonna change things up a little bit. We are going to be making a carrot cake cheesecake roll. So in this class, you're going to learn how to make a new cheesecake, how to bake a cheesecake, but then also how to roll a roulade without it cracking. It's a fantastic recipe. You get the best of both worlds, cake and cheesecake. You're really going to love it. So before you make this recipe, make sure that you've already watched the toolkit video. In the toolkit video, you learn about the ingredients, the equipment that you need, and all the tips and tricks to making cheesecake. This month we actually did it live so you were able to ask me your questions directly which I think was super helpful. So watch that before you get started. Once you've got that done we're going to talk about our ingredients. So let's talk carrots, really, really important. So the thing I want you to do is make sure that you grate them on the small side of the grater and I'll show you what I did. Here's my box grater here. You have this which is kind of normal for coleslaw, like grating apples, uh, cabbage, things like that. On uh, my grater here on the side, you've got the one that's like probably a quarter of that size. Grate them on the small sides of the grater. See this one here? I'm actually not sure, 100% sure what anyone uses this for, but I'm not talking about this one with the little rounds. I'm talking about the really tiny little grates. You need to get it really nice and fine and I'll tell you why. I've made this cake a few times and one time I grated the carrots on the food processor, which was really fast, but um, not the right move because they ended up being really thick. So um, you want to get them really lovely and fine because when they're fine, they disappear into the cake. You don't end up with lumps of carrot. So that's important. Do it by hand. Don't do it in your food processor like I did. Okay, let's talk our baked cheesecake ingredients. We have some sour cream here, a little bit of sour cream. Um, if you don't have sour cream, you can replace it with yogurt. And if you don't have yogurt, you can just do a little bit more cream cheese. That's not the end of the world. Sour cream gives another kind of like sharp, flavor, a little bit creamier. It, it does add, it adds something nice to a cheesecake. We have a room temperature egg here, large eggs as always, little bit of sugar, and then cream cheese. Now let's talk about our cream cheese. I talked about cream cheese in the toolkit video and also in last week's Nutella uh, cheesecake. I want you to use brick cream cheese. So that's something that comes in a block. Um, so it's kind of standard cream cheese. What I don't want to use is cream cheese spread. So anything in a tub because they are softer and sometimes they've got salt added to them. So um, just a, a plain old brick of plain cream cheese. That's what you want. Those are much better for baking cheesecakes and things like that. So that's that. Now what I do is you leave that out at room temperature, I would say two hours, or you can pop it into the microwave for like maybe 20 seconds or so and let it get softened. You do want to have it at room temperature softened because it'll whip up so much better. You do not want to cold from the fridge, otherwise you might end up with lumps in your cheesecake. So that's it, that's all the ingredients that we need. Simple recipe, really I'm excited to show you this one because it really um, is like a twist on a normal cheesecake. When I was thinking about doing this course, I thought like how many different ways are there to show how to make cheesecakes? And it turns out that there's a lot. So I'm excited for you to see this one. So I brought in my little stand mixer because for the cheesecake layer, we really want to whip up those eggs and get a lot of air in there. So the stand mixer is definitely best for that step. So before we get started, I want to talk to you about the pan. Now this is really important. 
because there are a lot of different kind of jelly roll size pans. We need a jelly roll, that's number one. If you Google a uh, jelly roll pan, this is what you'll come up with. Standard size of a jelly roll pan is 10 inches by 15 inches. But the thing about it is, is that um, they vary a little bit in countries and by brands and everything. Like for instance, the one that I have here is 11 inches by 17 inches. So it's similar, but different, but not so different that you can't use it. So if yours is 10 by 15, if it's 11 by 17, like mine, and there's even like 13 by 18 out there, if it's that, uh, you can use a variation of any of those. They will work. Um, you just need, you just do not want a big, Big old regular sheet pan because they're too big. This is a small cake, it's a thin cake. So you want this kind of like little neater sized pan. You want to butter it and then line it with parchment paper. Just a note, and I'm saying this because I've done it before, parchment paper, not wax paper. If you put wax paper down here, you're, it's not coming off your cheesecake. So um, parchment paper, your cake will just come right off it. And don't be afraid to bring up the parchment up the sides a little bit. Don't just line the base, bring it up the side because we need to get our cake out of there to roll it. So I'm gonna set this over here because we're going to need it in a minute for our cheesecake layer. So you want to set your oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, 165 degrees Celsius. It is lower than like you'd normally bake a cake, but there's two reasons. It's a very thin cake, so we're not baking it for long. But also we've got that cheesecake layer in there. We want to be careful that we don't overcook that cheesecake layer and make it kind of grainy. We want it nice and soft. So a low oven for this recipe. Okie dokie. First thing we're going to do is make the cheesecake layer because this all gets rolled up and the outside becomes the inside and all that sort of stuff. So you know what I mean. We have our brick cream cheese here. Now I do have a recipe for how you make your own cream cheese because I know it's not widely available and uh, you can use that for this recipe. I put all of that information in the toolkit and in your course materials. Make sure you check out your course materials because your written recipe, lots more information is there for you about this recipe, about the other recipes from the course. So I'm just going to put that in there. I'm going to add in my sour cream. Into this, we're going to add in our granulated sugar. And then we're going to turn the machine on to like a medium speed. And what we're going to do here is just whip it up with a K beater, or you can use a whisk, whatever you prefer. And we want to get this really lovely and smooth. And you saw me do this in the Nutella cheesecake uh, recipe, is that if you don't get these ingredients smooth, First, once you add in the egg, you can't get the lumps out. Cream cheese can be lumpy. That's why we soften it up a little bit in the microwave. We leave it out at room temperature. So get this really lovely and smooth. And this will take around three to four minutes. So don't worry about that. It does take some time. There we go. This is perfect. It's nice and whippy. Lovely. This is looking great. Okay. In goes our egg. A room temperature egg and our vanilla extract. Now we're just going to whip this up again just to combine these ingredients just for a few seconds. There we go. Look at that. A really lovely soft filling. Really smooth. Gorgeous. So now I'm going to bring in my pan and pour my cheesecake layer onto my prepared baking pan. So like the chocolate and hazelnut cheesecake, we're also going to be baking this cheesecake. We're going to be doing it a little bit different. With a spatula, just spread it out as evenly as you can. It is going to be a thin layer, but don't worry, it kind of thickens up when it bakes. And then also we have the carrot cake layer going on top. Palette knife will really help. Get it nice and even as best you can into the corners. Lovely. 
Okay, this is perfect. If you want to, you can pop it into the fridge. I'm just gonna put it here behind me because we're gonna do the cheesecake layer next and then it's gonna go straight on top. So as you can see already, this is a totally different baking experience. As a member of the Bold Baking Academy, you get so much more. You get access to exclusive recipe videos which are long form and in depth. You also get access to a community of bold bakers who you can ask questions, share photos and make friends. You also have access to the concierge service which is me and my team of experts there around the clock to to help you with any baking issues that you might have. And once again, if you like what you see here, you can get a 10 day free trial today to the Academy. Now back to the recipe. So I reset, I cleaned my bowl and I added a whisk attachment to my mixer. So here's what we're gonna do now. We are going to add in our eggs to our stand mixer. Now these are at room temperature because we need them to whip up. This style of cake doesn't have any butter in it. It is like a Genoa sponge. So what we're going to do is add in a little bit of flour, but a lot of it's going to be whipped up eggs. Into this, we're going to add in our flavorless oil. I'm using sunflower oil. We add in our sugar in here. And then we add in our vanilla extract. Always a welcomed addition. Now we are going to whip this on high for a good few minutes until it gets really lovely and thick. And I'm gonna show you exactly what it's gonna look like. So nice and high speed to really get the air in there. So getting these eggs really lovely and thick is what is going to make this cake rollable. It makes it kind of pliable. Already now we're like two minutes in and it's looking nice and thick, but we still need it to be a lot thicker. So I'm gonna let that keep going on high speed. And now we're just gonna to mix together our dry ingredients. So here I have my flour. We're gonna add in our spices. A little bit of ginger, cinnamon, and a little smidge of nutmeg. Now, if you don't like nutmeg, if you find it a little bit too overpowering, uh, you can leave it out, but it does give it kind of like a nice little kick. And I'm only putting in a quarter teaspoon. Just a teeny tiny bit. And then we're going to add in our raising agents, baking powder, baking soda, all the usual suspects. And of course, salt. Now you'll notice this is only a small amount of flour, but because this cake is mostly eggs, we only need a little bit of flour to kind of set it. Once your dry ingredients are combined, just set them here to the side because our eggs are almost ready. So while I'm waiting for this, I just want to remind you guys that every month you get two bonus recipes. So you don't only get three video recipes, but you get two bonus step-by-step -step recipes exclusive to the Academy. For this month, for instance, there's a turtle cheesecake, which by uh, the verdict of my team was hands down a winner. Absolutely incredible with pecans, chocolate sauce, caramel sauce. It was insane. I also made these cheesecake and blueberry spring rolls that were so delicious, really easy to make. You fry them off in a pan. You use egg roll wrappers, so delicious. So make sure you check out those uh, recipes. At the end of the month is a good time to do it because you already know all of your cheesecake skills and then you can practice those recipes until you start the next month's course. All of that is in your course materials. Okay, so let's check on this. So there we go. I got a lot of air in there. Do you see that? That air is what's going to leaven our cake. So if you want to go a little bit longer and get them even thicker, you can. You can't go too far. You can't like beat your eggs until they split. So don't worry about that. Believe me, I've done this a lot. Um, so there, this, this thickness though, this is perfect. So we're just gonna put this on again. We're gonna turn it on and we're just going to add in our dry ingredients and then followed by our carrots. So just on low, add in your dry and then add in your carrots. Mix it until it just combines and then stop the machine. So this is looking good. Bring back in my cheesecake. Now at any point when you're making my recipes, 
from the academy or even if you have baking questions in general make sure that you use the concierge service it is there as part of the academy i am there answering questions my team are there also around the clock queries that you have if you just you know are a little bit unsure if you want to share a photo of something not sure if it turned out right that's what we're there for so make sure you utilize that and it's really where I get to like nerd out. So apologies if you message me at 12 o'clock at night and I get back a really long message to you. It's just that that's the kind of stuff that I love. Okay, so we're going to pour gently, 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 gently the cake on top of the cheesecake layer. We want to gently spread the carrot cake on top of the cheesecake. We're not trying to spread these two layers together. Perfect. People are often worried about making this style of cake like a rolled cake and I get it but it's actually really simple like you saw how to make the cake like whip up the eggs that's one of the really important rules but um, when it comes to the rolling and everything it's just a few tips. We eat this a lot in Ireland because you would have it with a cup of tea. It's really impressive and it's easy to make. Okie dokie let's get this into the oven. So we're baking our cake 325 degrees Fahrenheit, 165 degrees Celsius for only around 25 to 27 minutes. The reason I'm very particular about this is that it's the thin cake. We don't want to over bake it because it can kind of toughen it. But then what happens is we're over baking our cheesecake layer. Unlike the Nutella cheesecake, we are not baking this in a water bath. What we're going to do is bake it at a low temperature for a short amount of time, which will still keep it nice and creamy. If you over bake it, it can get kind of grainy and a little bit eggy tasting so you just want to be really careful I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like this looks great so I was looking at it around the 23 minute mark and I actually think it was done then so just keep a close eye on it you want to cook it gently now you can tell when it's done because underneath your finger you can feel the bubbles in there all the bubbles that we created with the eggs but it feels like not it feels like not firm but like firm underneath your finger so you know that there's no raw cake this is great and you see how it kind of naturally it will pull away from the pan so this is perfect and then if you can kind of just peek down the sides you can see we have our cheesecake layer we have our carrot cake layer two very separate layers all baked into one this is going to be lovely so now here's what you want to do. Let it sit here for around say 10, 15 minutes or so and let it cool down. What we don't want to do is let it go cold. If it goes cold, when we try and roll it, that's when it will crack. So we need to roll it while it's still warm. So let it chill out here for right now and then we're gonna to get to rolling it. So our cake has cooled down. I have here my platter ready to go. I have a baking pan, some parchment paper and powdered sugar. I'm going to dust the top of this cake with powdered sugar and I'll tell you why. And um, we did this a few times and if you don't dust it, it can stick to the parchment paper because it's still warm. And we don't want to lose our cake to the parchment paper. So I'm just going to dust this. We end up dusting the cake anyway, so this is totally fine. Okay, so watch me. We're going to do it slowly. Daniel, I don't want you freaking out. You're well able for this. We're going to put our parchment paper on top. It's a little bit roly-poly. That's okay. We put our tray kind of upside down on top of that. Because this is cooled down now, I'm able to flip it. So we have here like this, we're going to flip, flip, flip it over. Just like that. There we go. We can pull out our cake pan. We just needed that to flip it. You can also use a cooling rack works really well. We're going to lift off our pan like that. And then carefully remove the parchment paper. Now you do want to be careful. Remember this cheesecake is still a little bit warm. There we go. One of the reasons you don't want it cold is also it might stick to the parchment. So now we get into the rolling. So it's funny, in Ireland, we always, when we'd make a roulade or a Swiss roll or something like that, we would roll it this way and you'd end up with a really long cake. But in the United States and maybe other countries too, they roll it from the narrow side. So you end up with a really thick, shorter cake, which is so funny to me, but it does look really good. But it's just something I've never really done before. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna to go to the little narrow side and we're going to fold it over gently. We're gonna do this slowly. 
bring it nice and close, flatten it down there. Use the parchment paper. This is your friend, this is your guide. Use the paper to roll it. Keep your roll nice and tight. We don't want any gaps in the center of our cheesecake. Roll, there we go, do you see this? How are we looking, are we looking good? Ho, 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 lovely. Just give it a little bit of a little bit of a squeeze. Sometimes people let it go cold in this uh, spot when it's rolled up, just so it holds its shape. You, you can put it straight on the platter. Here we go. You ready? If there's cracks, you get your money back, okay? Ah, no cracks. Gorgeous, a lovely pliable cake. So once it's rolled, very gently lift it onto your platter, just like that. And then just for garnish, I'm gonna dust a little bit more powdered sugar over it. I just think that contrast of the white and the color and everything looks nice. Gorgeous, look at that. Sometimes, you know, in bakeries um, and, you know, in pastry school, we were told to like take off the edges to make it look like more kind of more finished, more like perfect. But I think this is gorgeous. Like to me, this is perfect. Look at that. I'm gonna stop talking about it. I'm gonna cut a big slice just so you can see what the inside looks like. So use a serrated knife to cut your cake and not a chopping knife. So when you cut it, do you see that? You see all those gorgeous layers? Check that out. Absolute perfection, if I do say so myself. You have the best of both worlds, two really complementing flavors. Cheesecake and carrot cake go so well together. You've got two different textures, the creamy cheesecake and then the really light and fluffy carrot cake. And then the contrast of colors, the white and the kind of orangey cake mix, absolutely beautiful. So I can already tell you, this does taste as good as it looks. Oh my gosh. A little bit of spice in that cake, not too much. I was careful not to add too much in there. Cheesecake is absolutely delicious. It's like the perfect amount of everything. You take a bite of cheesecake and you get a bite of cake. It's like the perfect little biteful. I mean, seriously, this ticks all the boxes for me. So if you're a serious bold baker and want to take your baking skills to the next level, then join us over at the Bold Baking Academy. You can sign up month to month or you can get a discounted yearly rate. Remember, there is a 10 day free trial waiting for you. All that information can be found below. I hope to see you there.